Okay, the next bit's kind of fun, and the reason that we had to install Docker first was that we're going to use Docker to compile and in install SnapRaid. Now, the reason for this is that um, SnapRaid is a package, it's not available as a package, and so we have to um, build it from source. Uh, now, I've created this um, Docker Snap Raid repository on GitHub. The link is in the article just here. And uh, this, this repository uh, has a, a Docker file. And in here, we install a bunch of dependencies that would otherwise have to live on this system here. Um, but in here, they live inside the Docker container in a safe sandboxed environment. We do a bunch of stuff. We grab Snap Raid from the Snap Raid GitHub, we extract it, we configure the, the um, make file, build it, and then export the final artifact as a .deb file ready for us to install later. Uh, the clever bit, in my opinion, I wrote this so I would say that, is this um, script here. And this script builds the um, container as per the Docker file. It uh, then copies the uh, deb file out of the container onto your host system, deletes the container and deletes the image and leaves no trace except for a deb file that you can install. So let's get that started, shall we? First things first, we need to install git. So let's do apt install git. Git's already installed. I, sh I might remove that before I publish this article. Okay, next thing, let's uh, clone the git repository and then go into the folder of the repository, make the build script executable with chmod plus x. If we look at the permissions on this file, build is now executable. That's what this bit means, in case you'd ever wondered. Um, this means I can actually execute the file, so let's do that with a dot slash build dot sh. That's now going to execute the script, build snap raid from source, and um, I'm going to speed the footage up again. Back in a minute. There we have it. Snap Raid has been built from source. And if we look in the uh, build directory, we now have a deb file which we can pass to Debian's package installer, dpackage minus i snap raid or build snap raid from source dot deb. Going to install that and again if we do apt in oh, list, apt list, pipe it to grep and we search for snap raid, we can see that snap raid is um, version 11.1 .1 is installed. Also, if we do snap raid hyphen capital V, we can see version 11.1 .1 is there. Also, there are no traces left except for the um, Debian Jesse image. There's nothing left in Docker PS either. We don't have uh, any, any build tools, so nothing like um, we would normally have. We'd normally need GCC and make and all this other stuff installed to, I mean, if I just, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> uh, it means you can compile pretty much any software for any operating system without needing to have a VM lying around. Docker is awesome for this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, now we'll move on to actually configuration, uh, the, move on to the configuration of SnapRaid. And that's done using a file called etcsnapraid.conf. You can see the version that uh, drives my system here. And it's a very straightforward file. At the top, you define the parity drives. Again, you're using the file paths we created earlier. You want at least a couple of content files. I put a dot in front of mine so that they're not visible when I'm browsing my drives. And then you have your data disks and that's it. That's the, that's the mandatory stuff. And then down here, um, there's a bunch of hidden files and directories. I have a few things in mind like um, snapshots, app data. So this is where my Docker stuff lives. Uh, I don't want that being backed up by SnapRaid. I, I don't really care. Uh, and the downloads directory again, I, 
if I've just downloaded it once, I can download it again. So I don't really care about that. And then some BitTorrent sync files and things of Resilio sync these days. So yeah, that's the file that configures Snap Raid. Um, very straightforward stuff. So if we go back to my main server, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I'm root. And then um, I'll just run a Snap Raid uh, status. And you can see when it does this, it loads the state of the Snap Raid array from slash var slash Snap Raid dot content. And then it's going to print me out a status report of the array. Now I've never really worked out what this wasted thing means. I'm sure it's in the documentation. Someone please enlighten me. Um, and you can see that I've got my data drives here. You can see how much space is in use, blah, 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 blah. And uh, a bunch more information about the drives as well. Uh, and also here, this graph shows me how often the drives have been scrubbed. And scrubbing is basically the closest thing to having a checksumming file system without using ZFS that I've come across. Um, so I have a percentage set at the bottom of my um, Snapraid runner file, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, so I will stop talking about that now. Um, let's go back to the article and just check where we are. Yeah, okay. So the first thing you want to do is run a Snapraid sync. Now this will take a while, um, so you do want to consider running it in screen or tmux. So screen is dead easy to use. Uh, if you don't have it already, just type apt install screen. I, I have it on this system. So just type screen. That will create a detached session from your shell for you. And then you can just run Snapraid sync. And it's that easy. So if you want to exit screen, it's control A, control D, and that will exit. If you want to return to screen, you can do screen minus LS. If you've only got one session running, you can do screen capital R uh, to re retrieve it. And then I think it's uh, you can put a number like that as well and go back to the session where you went. You see that the snap raid sync's been running in the background. And the reason that that's important is because if, if my SSH connection was to die, anything that's running in the foreground in this window would die with the SSH connection. So let's just prove that now. If I exit here and go back, um, I can prove that the screen session underneath is still, I was root, <laughs> worried myself for a second. I can go here, my session is still there, so let's retrieve that session. And we can see that underneath, the snap raid has still been running the whole time. Perfect, exactly what we want. So yes, do you use screen or tmux is just a, a, a slightly different um, way of working. It's, it's not as easy to understand, but it's, it's a bit like nano versus vim for some people. I use both interchangeably. Um, okay, so now let's move on to uh, the automation of Snap Raid. Automating Snap Raid, we're going to use a script available on GitHub uh, from this guy, Cronial Snap Raid Runner. It's not been touched for two years or more. There are some forks around and um, they're a little more up to date. Uh, initial push bullet integration, there's one there, Gmail. Yeah, but it's basically safe to say this, this script is pretty much abandonware at this point. However, well, gosh, look at that. Yes, the last <laughs> the last commit was um, Snap Raid version eight and we've just seen, we've installed Snap Raid version 11. Um, however, don't let that put you off. It's a very useful script and it just works. So hopefully someone will come along one day and uh, maintain that if it needs it. Um, for now, let's just keep it simple and stick to the original plan and show you how to install this stuff. Okie dokie. So here we are on our VM once more. We're going to make a directory, opt snap raid runner. I'm going to enter that directory, change to it. Um, then let's download the script using wget. This is where I hope wget's installed and it is. Brilliant. Uh, and then the next thing is we're going to download and install um, this script here, which is going to install the Snap Raid Runner configuration file. 
uh, you will need to edit this file. So let's use VI. Some of you will use Nano. It really doesn't matter. Snapbraidrunner.conf. So anywhere that you see in this file, two curly brackets, you need to modify this line. And something like uh, an email address would be perfect. Same for username, password. I use Gmail, it works just fine. The only real important things to make sure are correct here are that the Snapraid binary is in the correct place. And we can check that quite easily with um, something called which. So if we type which Snapraid, we can see here that that's the file path of the binary that we want to run. So that needs to match this and it does. Yes, it does, excellent. Um, the next thing is looking at where the config file is. Now we know it's in etc snapraid.conf because we've just put it there. Um, here's where it will write snapraid logs to. Same, um, some configuration around when it will actually send you an email. So every day I get an email that comes through and says your sync was either successful or failed. And here's a quick short summary of why. Um, here's how you configure Gmail and finally here's where we configure the scrub. Now um, I choose to do 22% every day as long as it's older than 12 days. So this goes back to the Snapraid status command and the scrubs. So that's how we automate this. Now let's say we want to add this stuff to run automatically every day. We need to use something called cron. Cron automates stuff for us. Now if we use cron tab minus E, we can edit cron tab. Uh, you will have this option the first time to use nano or vim, choose whichever, doesn't really matter. Um, at the bottom of the file, you want to add the text from the article. And make sure that the file paths are correct, slash opt, slash that raid runner, blah, 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 blah. Yep, that all looks good. You can change the time and date here. There are, um, cron tab uh, generators all over the place so I don't know this this one here so you can you can say right run I want this to run every 30 minutes on odd hours every five days Monday to Friday on every every even month and then you can put in the command to execute which in, in our case is going to be Python 2 this and then generate the cron tab line and it generates all the complicated stuff for you. You just copy and paste that into here and you're good to go. So that's how you do a cron tab entry. Actually not that difficult. And congratulations, Snap Raid is now automated. Oh yes, one more thing to uh, point out. If the delete threshold is exceeded, so in this case, if there are more deletes than 250 files since the last sync, the automated um, script will fail and will send you an email saying, I failed. Um, you can change this. I found 250 to be a good number and the, the, the way to get around it, um, if it does fail, is just to do a manual sync. Again, you can use screen or something like that to do that in the background. Uh, and then you'll be able to the automation will pick up things for you the next day. All right, so that's the automation of Snap Raid, and it's now time to configure network file sharing.